Hey guys, um, I'm going to do uh, this very quickly and I want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, God is calling his people to take their mouth off of one another. Okay. Take their mouth off of each other. What does this mean? It simply means we need to stop backbiting. We need to stop, um, criticizing one another and making assumptions in how we feel like God is going to move. Too often believers will look at someone and feel like this is the only way, this is the only format in which God is going to move. And God is using people in many unorthodox ways. God is raising up people, young, old, uh, people that just got saved, people that got tattoos all over their face, guys, people that... They have not been to anybody's Bible college, people that they are not necessarily in anyone's church. He's calling up the teenager, all of these individuals, my brothers and sisters, he's calling up in these last days to do his work. And the problem that's happening and why many of these individuals are being discouraged and not able to do the work is because you've got straight laced believers who feel like this is the only way God is going to move. And they are the main ones that's being critical to these individuals discouraging them, you know, criticizing what they look like, criticize what they're wearing, criticize, um, how long they've been saved. And it's basically, you are basically saying, well, if you are not covered by this person, and if you are, have not gone through this process, then God cannot use you. Well, God is wanting me to ask you, who are you to make any decisions on what, who he's going to use? Who are you to make any decisions and to make any calls on who he is going to use and how he uses them? The bottom line is the power you, most people are looking at themselves and they are trying to make this, basically it's about control. And God wants us not to underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit and who he's going to use. Do not underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit and who he is going to use. It is not them. It is not the vessel. It is Christ in them. And it's about time that the people of God step back and get out of God's lane. Because many of you are going to hear depart from me. Because you discourage that young man. You discourage that young woman. You castigated and ostracized, ostracized that man or woman that was stepping out and doing the things that God told them to do. That couple that the Lord told them they needed to do their own thing and move and go here and do certain things. And because you want to say you did not get approval, you did not get covering, you need to be in my church, you need to be in somebody's church. Who said that? I am not against the church, my brothers and sisters, even though most of these churches these days is nothing more than a, a gathering lounge. But there are churches in which the spirit of God is moving. But my brothers and sisters, God is not subject to you or my, my thought on how things should be. You know, in the word of God, the disciples came to Jesus once because there was a man who was casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And they tried to rebuke him. Actually, they did. And they went to Jesus and gave Jesus a report. Maybe they expected that Jesus would, would say, good job. But Jesus corrected them. He said that one of the disciples, I believe it was John, that came, not John the Baptist, but one of the disciples came up to Jesus and said, uh, there was a gentleman who's trying to rebuke in our name, but he was not one of us. So we stopped him. And Jesus told him, don't do that. Basically, in a nutshell, he said, if he is for us, then he is not against us. So don't stop him from doing the work. Too often, there are people that's hung up on things. People are giving a message of God, but you're busy looking in the background. You're busy listening to, oh, what kind of background music did they use? You're busy listening to looking at the shirt they got on. You're looking at, oh, they have two earrings in their ear. You're looking at the lipstick that they got on. But I'm here to tell you that when I go back and I look at some of my early, early videos, you know what? I saw where <laughs> there was room for growth. When I go back and I listen to maybe some of the music I used, it was too loud. Maybe it could have been different. But you know what? The Lord used me. He gave me the message. 
And I did what, what I felt was right. I just wanted to deliver his message. And over time, he changed me. He taught me some things. I didn't know anything about uh, adding music. And in the beginning, that was not my interest. But then if I started to go in that direction. The Lord started teaching me how to do things. I literally prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to teach me and show me how to upload and add pics and, and motion and music. And I'd say, Lord, I want you to teach me. And the Holy Spirit did teach me. And so my brothers and sisters, I started off, maybe my music was louder than my voice and all of that. I can look at myself and see the growth from where I was at the very beginning and how the Lord matured me over, over time. But you know, there will be people that will sit there and just go on and on. I remember I have a Thundercat shirt. I did a video. I did a, uh, it was about uh, the spirit of Vashti or something like that. And all people, an individual was talking about was my colors on my shirt is red and black. And so it's, it's the colors of a witch. And I'm like, wow, wow. You know, I'm doing the work of God. I'm doing what he's called me to do. Know that I'm laying before the Lord on my face and seeking God. But you have people that's going to look at the color of your shirt and make assumptions. And my brothers and sisters, it was so easy. I could have just really responded because I'm, I'm good with minds. I know how to do that. But one thing the Lord has taught me and said, no, I will fight your battles. You don't need to say anything back. You don't need to check anybody from head to toe, <laughs> from the pinky toe on up. And so I learned to leave those things to God. But it's just in my spirit to talk about that. Because there are people that are, they are discouraging and hampering people that God has called up and God has put a message in them. And people are thinking, saying, oh, you're too young. What do you know? You're only 17. You're only 18. They're looking at people, oh, look at your shirt. Look at what you got on. Uh-uh. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord has had me do videos in the past where I have had to make corrections or by the Holy Spirit make correction on YouTube. Creators getting on with tight clothes and things on. But my brothers and sisters, that was a whole different spirit in which that was done. And that was not done to bring anybody down. But the Lord is not addressing babes in Christ who are growing. The Lord was addressing people who are deliberately trying to be seductive. Jezebel spirits in which people are getting up speaking about God, but they're making sure they really, they have the low cuts. They showing your waist, the big booty, the thighs, the short shorts, all of that. It's all about them. And so the Lord is rebuking that spirit. But guys, we're talking about people that's getting up and you have discernment and you can hear the message. The power of God. The anointing on these individuals and people are just dogging them out because they're young. Dogging them out because, oh, you have on lipstick. Dogging them out because the person has on makeup. Dogging out the person because they have tattoos. Dogging the person out because of their past. And you know who's doing this? Other believers. And God is warning his people. You that have the mindset of the Pharisees and the scribes. He's given you a warning. To touch not his anointed. You know, a lot of times people have used that. That's been the most abused line. And it was only for supposed big shots. Touch not my anointed. Well, let me tell you who God is anointed is. When the Lord said touch not my anointed in, when that first came up, he was talking about all the children of Israel. And he was saying this against the enemies of the children of Israel. The enemies of the people of God. So anyone that attacked the people of God, period. Those are his anointed. Those are his called. So guess what? 
You cannot be called if you're, if you're attacking another believer. People who are speaking God's word based on a t-shirt. So you're going to say that God can't move because of the t-shirt that they're wearing? God can't move because they have tattoos? Oh no, we're not talking about the same God here. God is doing a work and he's moving in ways that you and I are not even going to be able to imagine. And it is our jobs to, to, to step out of the way. Let God, let God's will be done. He's confounding a lot of people that think that they know. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that feel like they got God all figured out. God's their buddy. They expect God to follow them. And when God does not, rather than get in line with God, they're over there just chirping and chipping and chirping away. Trying to save face. Or just, just coming up with their own things. It is time for us to be humble. But I hear the Lord saying he's moving. He's raising up people. And you're going to be, there's a lot of people that feel like you've been saved longer. You've been, you were saved before people. So you feel like they shouldn't be used in the area of prophecy. They can't be used. They can't be evangelizing on their, on their platforms. They can't be going out in the street because you want to give them a certain order, a certain way things got to be. But God wants you to keep your hands off. Outside of us praying for them, encouraging them, and making corrections as we are led by God, the Lord is saying to leave them to me. Because a lot of these people, the Lord raised them up right outside the church. They received the Lord in their cars. They received the Lord in the club. They received the Lord in their living rooms. They received the Lord just in the shower. Just like the Lord fell upon me while I was just driving. Driving my car, all of a sudden, I, as much as I was living my own life, I started to cry. I started to cry. I had a longing for God all of a sudden. Days before, suddenly I wanted a Bible and I went to the family Christian bookstore and I bought a Bible. And I was like, what's up with that? Okay, because I was living my life and doing what I want to do. Next minute, I go back to the family bookstore. I want to listen to some music, some Christian music. And I bought this particular CD and I'm listening. I'm like, okay, cool. Few days later, a few days before my birthday, and I had plans that we was gonna go turning up at the lounge. This little lounge, one of my friends, she knew the owner. We we're gonna go out there and hang out. And days before my birthday, the power of God came upon me in my vehicle, and I was crying uncontrollably and just crying out to God. But what people don't know was before that I was always talking to God, even in the middle of my sins. I didn't want to be this way. I sat in my closet and prayed with a glass of wine in my hand, sipping my wine and talking to God, just talking to God, Lord, are you there? And he came and he got me and he saved me. And there was still my process that I went through after that, but he brought me to that place. But what I'm here to tell you, God is going out and reaching out and pulling us out the gutter. He's pulling us out of our sins. He's saving us. And the reason why he's doing that is because he's in a place where he can no longer trust the churches. He's pulling out rowdy, rough folks like myself. <laughs> he's pulling out people that was gangsters. I was in no gang, but I wasn't scared either. I let you know. And he's pulling out people that's bold and it's going to be bold like we were in the world, bold like we was in a fight, bold like we was to let you have it. He's pulling people like that out in these days, people who are not afraid. We were warriors for the devil doing what we want to do. And now we've been called to God. And truth be told, we always wanted God. But we were lost. We believed the lie that God didn't want us. And so we went on the other side. But the truth is now he's called us out of darkness into his light and we're bold. And what's going on, the reason why God is right now, he has a hand of protection on those that he has called and he's called out is because they're being damaged by other believers. 
Believers who have made themselves little gods. Believers who feel like they are roommates with Jesus. And they feel like they can treat anybody in your way. And people are losing their way. And people are going back into the church. Going back into the world. When the homosexual come out and he's saved. And he want to know God. The men in the church are shunning him. Making fun of him. Because maybe he still has some of his mannerisms. And they want to hide their sons from him. And make him feel bad. So the only place he can go back is to the world where he was accepted. When the lesbian gets saved and she comes into the house of God, the women are hiding their daughters and they, they moving away from her. Either that or they trying to exploit them, doing whatever they want to do to them, making them feel bad. So now they don't feel the love anymore and they're going back into the world. Oh, you had that man or woman that gets saved and they come in and they're so excited for the Lord and they, they share their life and share what they used to do. But the very thing that they shared is now being used against them and determining how they're going to be used in ministry or not. So God is setting a hedge of protection around these people where he's not allowing the religious folks, those, the cookie cutters, y'all that want to put people on a factory setting. And you think that you're going to put your hands on those that God has called up. God is saying, no, he's not going to allow you to destroy them. He's brought people. Some people are out on the street corners. Some are out in the wilderness like John the Baptist. And he wants y'all to take your mouth off of these people. Stop talking about you need to be up in here. They don't need to do anything. They need to follow what God has told them to do. And too often people are trying to put God just in four walls and saying this is the only way God can work. But we need to change our verbiage and say, God, teach me how to follow your plan and your way. Even if this seems unfamiliar to me, Lord, the very least I know I need to pray for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. The very least I know I need to get on my knees for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And if they are out there and they are preaching your gospel and they're speaking your word, then my job is to pray and cover them because God's covering goes beyond four walls and mortal man. My brothers and sisters, this is a warning. Stop messing with God's people. The world is not coming to the church because there's too much war. We supposedly be believing the same God, but we all saying different things. We don't have no schizophrenic God. What are these different voices? Well, I'm going to let you know you're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. You're either hearing from God or you're hearing from Satan. You're either a wheat or you're a tear. You, you, you understand that? You're either going to be on the right hand side as a child of God or on the left hand side of the throne as the goats. God is moving in an incredible way. He's moving. We see young people preaching the gospel. People, there's a young man in India, I believe, I don't know how long ago, beaten to death simply because. He believed in God. He had the opportunity to say, I don't want to. I, I don't believe in God no more. My bad. But he was martyred. And there are many more. There are many more. People are ostracized and losing their family for God. And then people are over here. <sighs> leaving church. Stop talking to people just because they said something you didn't like. <laughs> but God is raising up the remnant. He's raising up young men, old, young, and no one has a right to say you're too young, you're too old, you're a man, you're a woman, you, you, you just got saved. That has nothing to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not the person on the outside, but who is on the inside operating in them. And God says, all we need to do is pray. We need to look to him and stop looking to find ways to cut down one another. And he's not going to allow you to continue to harass and to mess up 
and to try to cause problems with ones that he has sent. It is a, it's a dangerous thing to do. It is a very dangerous thing to do. And those of you that's doing the work of God, continue to do it. Don't let anybody talk you down. You look to the hills from whence comes your help. You continue to do the work of God. Because I'm here to tell you that when people come against you, you need to go and pray to God. You better learn the art of telling it. You better learn the art, the art of going to tell your daddy. When they mess with you, when they talk about you, it hurts. But I, I invite you to go to God every time. Go to God every time. Because he's going to take care of your enemies. And a lot of times the enemy is not going to be those that's in the world. It's not going to be the unsaved. A lot of your, your pushback is going to come from other believers who wants to pull you into the mold. But I'm going to invite you to follow God, to seek him, get before him in prayer and in fasting, get before him in prayer and in fasting and obedience to his will. And again, I say to the brothers and sisters in the Lord out there, stop trying to stop people, set people up. Because you're not fighting against them. You're fighting against God. And if you're fighting against God, that's one war and one fight. You're not going to win. This is all I have, guys.